Thanks for being here. Today I am doing a very off the cuff video, but I wanted to share an activity that I like to do during the winter, usually later in the winter, but I've been a little impatient. It's been kind of a hard month for me and I will be sharing a little bit about why um, in a future video. But one of my favorite activities to do in winter is look at the seeds that I have collected for next year's growing season and just kind of fantasize about what I'm going to do with those seeds, where I'm going to grow them, and just what I imagine my garden will look like. And um, it makes the winter go by a little bit faster, I think. So, I have a lot of seeds that I collected last year from my garden as well as some seeds that I bought um, for plants that I've never grown before. So obviously this is the Acadian garden and apothecary so I have a vegetable garden as well as some areas where I grow medicinal herbs. All right so I've used a few methods for collecting seeds this is an old jewelry making organizer for like beads and jewelry hardware um, that you can get at any craft store. And I repurposed this for seeds. And so everything that you see here with the exception of the carrots are things that I collected from the garden in the previous growing season. So I have some bok choy, um, some basil, lemon basil in particular, that I love to use for flavoring teas. Um, some sweet corn. It looks like it's popcorn and sweet corn, but it's actually just all sweet corn. Um, I found out that you're not supposed to grow two varieties of corn too close to each other as they will cross-pollinate and you might end up with something that doesn't taste as good as if you had grown both of these varieties of corn separately. So I decided to just do the sweet corn last year and these are the seeds that I collected from it. I also have some cilantro, um, bell peppers. I actually have a bell pepper that I brought inside as well and it's growing in my windowsill over here. And it's actually just started to flower and I've been using mullen leaves. You hear me talk a lot about mullen. I actually took a small mullen leaf and used it to pollinate the flowers and it looks like they're starting to produce peppers so I'm pretty excited about that. If it's successful I will definitely be doing a video sharing um, how to overwinter a pepper and potentially grow peppers indoors in, in the winter. So it's pretty cool. All right what else do we have here? Some acorn squash and some butternut squash. It will be interesting to see how these grow in the next growing season. Um, same thing with the corn. I didn't realize that if you put the plants together, especially varieties of winter squash, they can cross pollinate. Uh, and I grew winter squash, like a yellow squash and acorn squash next to each other. And uh, I might end up with some weird cross mix between that uh, with my next round of acorn squash. Uh, so I also collected some white onion seeds and I will be starting those indoors. Some carrots from last year's growing season and these are just left over from a package of carrots. Uh, I grew a really nice variety of short and sweet carrots and I tried carrots a few years ago. It didn't have much success. This time I did and we ate carrots until about like late November before we ran out, just pulling them straight out of the ground. So that was pretty cool. Then I have some bush black beans. My husband loves beans. We make it for his lunches almost every week when we're not making like a, a beef stew or, or some kind of vegetable stew for him to pack when he brings to work. I also have some garlic seeds. Typically you grow garlic from bulbs, but they do actually seed. The, the flowering head looks pretty similar to an onion head, but the seeds that are produced from it are, are a bit larger. So these are our onion seeds and these, it says red boar kale, it's, it's not red boar kale, uh, but these are the garlic seeds and as you can see, they're uh, much larger. All right, I also have some arugula, some sugar magnolia peas. These were a, a climbing purple pea that I used in my three sisters garden last year. 
and uh, I really enjoyed that. I had a lot of success with my Three Sisters garden, so I plan to use those sugar magnolia peas again. Luckily this time I have probably three to four times as many as I had when I bought the, the first packet. So we'll have more sugar magnolia peas to enjoy during the summer. Last here I have some green beans and I believe these are a blue lake bush bean. Uh, I wish I'd kept the package. I actually can't remember right off the top of my head, but I might have it written down somewhere. Uh, but these are a, a great variety of bean, um, very productive, or that's at least what I found growing them last year. And um, I collected the seed from that and we'll have probably three to four times as many, um, similar to the sugar magnolia peas. Hey, Jackie. So this is another really great seed organizing container that I bought on Amazon. And although it's not really good for large seeds like green beans, black beans, sugar magnolia peas, or, or corn. It's really great for really small seeds. So as you can see here, it has just dozens of little plastic containers that, that kind of look like, I don't know, Tic Tac containers. And um, these are perfect for storing small seeds. So what I've done here is I've started a, a numbered list of the different seeds I'm saving. So you can see here at the top, I have calendula, desico broccoli, poblano peppers, echinacea seeds, pie pumpkin seeds. Those are a bit big to keep in these, but I didn't have very many pie pumpkins this year, so it worked out well. Each of these are numbered. And then if you look inside the packaging here, you can identify which seeds are in which containers based on the number. What is this? Ah, oh, yes. This is <laughs> a very, very small collection of DeSicco broccoli seeds. Uh, my first time growing broccoli was last year and I, I hear growing broccoli is hard, especially getting it at just the right time that it grows without bolting. And the, the growing season for that in at least our area is a little bit short. So I was able to successfully grow three or four broccoli heads and these were the seeds I was able to collect from those. Uh, I'm going to try it again because I really like the taste of the DeSico broccoli. The, the whole thing including the stem is is really tender and, and tasty. I just love using it in stir fries. All right so this is my collection of calendula seeds. They're really funky looking seeds. Um, they kind of look like weird little worms or bugs. Or at least that's what I think they look like. I used it to make different calendula salves out of calendula petals, some beeswax and some olive oil. And my husband absolutely loves it. He uses it as a beard and face cream. Um, and he actually just ran out the other day of, of the batch that I recently made in. We're planning to make at least four times as much next year. So we will use these seeds to start a new batch of calendula so that we have plenty of flowering heads to enjoy for their beauty, but also to, to harvest and make medicines out of. All right, my biggest collection here is Echinacea. As you can see, I've collected quite a bit of Echinacea. You can never have too much. Echinacea is a great plant for the immune system, specifically the, the roots of the echinacea plant. Of course, the flowers are really lovely too, and the bees love them. Echinacea is a late flowering plant, so you usually see the flowering heads in late summer to early autumn, and it's just really great to have that kind of color in the garden, and um, I just find echinacea looks absolutely beautiful during the, the golden hours of the day. And so I have a few areas where I'm growing echinacea, but it's really more as a, a decorative feature or like a landscaping feature. I plan next year to have a, a, a raised bed that's dedicated to growing echinacea specifically for uprooting and uh, harvesting the roots for, for medicinal teas. So this big package I got at the Common Ground Fair this year, and it is certified organic medium red clover. So red clover is another great medicinal plant. 
it's useful for a lot of different things. Some people will tincture it and use it for treating acne. Uh, in general, it's a great it's a great wellness plant that supports a lot of different systems in your body and can help remove impurities from the liver. And this is also a very popular plant for commercial growers. So I attended a uh, presentation on growing medicinal herbs or just, just growing herbs commercially. And there's actually a really nice network within Maine that will allow small farmers. Um, so we're, I'm talking like really small. You, you could have an, an herb garden that is under, under five acres and uh, they will buy your seeds once they've certified that you're organic and they will help you go through that process. Um, they will buy your seeds and distribute them to a larger commercial seller. So they basically just collect, maybe you have five or six small farmers in Maine growing the same crop. They're all organic certified. They just collect that all and sell it in bulk on a larger market. So you actually have the opportunity to participate in selling your herbs without actually having to go through the process of marketing it yourself. And I, I think that's really cool because I think that is a big barrier for small time farmers to try to create a market for themselves, especially when it comes to something like herbs. So after doing that uh, Growing Herbs Commercially workshop, my plan this year is to see how much clover I can grow and see how much of it I can dry and how many pounds of dry weight that comes to so I can get a better idea of how large of an area I would need to dedicate to certain types of herbs in order to make a, a reasonable profit selling it. So this collection of seed packets are the ones that I'm most excited about. A lot of these are medicinal herbs that I have never grown before, and they're also pretty difficult to find locally. I've been trying to buy most of my seeds locally, but unfortunately it's usually just, you know, your typical garden variety vegetables. There are some good garden variety heirloom seeds, but medicinal herbs are a bit harder to come by. So I went online and found a website called Rare Seeds, just rareseeds.com, and they have a really great collection of hard to find seeds, including medicinal seeds. So first up, I have lavender. Lavender is absolutely wonderful for, for many different uses. It's a great uh, aromatic oil. You can add it to teas to make something that reduces anxiety. You can add it to your bath water. I mean, there's just so many uses for lavender. The only problem is lavender is a bit difficult to grow in cold climates. Most varieties of lavender won't overwinter in somewhere like Maine, which is, which is where I live. So I specifically looked for a variety of cold hardy lavender and this variety, Elegance Purple Lavender is winter hardy from USDA zones five through seven. We are kind of right on the cusp of four and five. So my hope is if I'm able to start these um, indoors and get a sizable plant through to the end of summer, uh, I can cover them with a nice heavy mulch and keep them alive during winter. This is definitely going to be an experiment on my part, though I did hear from that Growing Herbs Commercially workshop at the Common Ground Fair that there are people who have managed to grow uh, perennial lavender in Maine. The next one I have is Whorehound. Whorehound uh, is a plant I've never grown before. It's also a perennial, so my hope is that I can plant it and have it year after year. And this is great for uh, as a cold remedy. So my plan is to add Whorehound to my formulas of mullein and marshmallow root. Speaking of marshmallow root, I also have marshmallow here. So marshmallow root is an African native plant and I found it kind of interesting that it is relatively tolerant of the frost and you actually want to direct seed in late winter or very early spring. So I don't know if that is true for my zone. I might have to do a little bit of research. These seeds come from Missouri, um, which I think is a little bit warmer than here. Maybe not, I don't know, I'll have to check. Like the whorehound and lavender, it will come back year after year and I won't have to worry about making sure I buy seed each year. Next is St. John's wort. So I tried growing St. John's wort last year and I didn't manage to get any of the seeds to germinate. I was really disappointed by that. Uh, but St. John's wort is a mood enhancing herb 
and it has really pretty yellow flowers and kind of a bushy appearance. Uh, so hopefully I have a little bit more success this year and it's also a perennial, uh, so I'll try to get it to come back year after year. So this was a free seed packet that came with my order. It's called Mizuna Benny Haushi and it looks like some kind of green. So it says here it's a newly developed Japanese heirloom, nutritious purple stems, dark greens and lovely contrast, and delicate flavor is unparalleled. So this plant is adapted to both extreme heat and cold. That's, that's pretty cool. I don't know too many plants that can tolerate both. So yeah, I'll, I'll try growing this and in any area that I have that's open and I'll let you know how it tastes. The last of my rare seeds is the Tide Holy Basil. Holy Basil is a medicinal plant. It also has really great flavor. Uh, like I said, I'm already growing lemon basil, but I really wanted to try a variety of holy basil. This spring, my garden is going to be the biggest it's ever been, and it is definitely a little overwhelming trying to plan all of the seeds I need to buy, what seeds I have, what seeds I need to make sure I leave some plants on the ground so that I have an opportunity to seed save from them. So what I've been trying to do is get a, a running list of what I would like to grow and what I have, what I need. Instead of making a visual, I'm just sticking to a list and using a key to keep track of what I have and what I don't have. Everything that's highlighted are my perennial plants. And the thought here is that these are plants I don't need to worry about necessarily collecting seed from each year. Uh, I still plan to collect seed because eventually plants like sage and thyme, they might not um, continue to grow as well as they age and they'll, you'll want to plant new seeds. What I have included here are seeds I've saved already. So this just like kind of looks like quotations. That's how I'm keeping track of the seeds I've already collected. And you can see those by a few areas here. And then finally, I have a little asterisk to represent any plants that are new that I haven't grown before and that I don't have seed for. There's still things that I need to buy, like different varieties of beans. We're gonna grow summer squash this year. <laughs> oats, my husband really likes growing things like oats and barley. So we've made a nice plot right next to my three sisters garden where he'll be tilling up an area and uh, trying that out for the first time. Really excited about that. If we're able to harvest enough, we're gonna buy a, a little hand crank <laughs> grain mill and try making some of our own flour for things like ploys, maybe pancakes and, and biscuits and things like that. But yeah. That's my garden plan for next year. I'm sure I'll go to the store during the spring and pick up a few extra things that are not on my list because I just love to, to grow new things and add as many medicinal herbs to my own personal collection as I can. I haven't done a journal entry in a while and I just wanted to sit down and spend a little time with you folks and share some of the things that I'm excited about next year maybe inspire you to get excited about what you're growing in your garden next year. Um, a lot of the things that I've mentioned here have dwarf varieties. So if you are somebody who has limited space or can only do things in containers, don't let that stop you from starting an herb garden or even a vegetable garden. There, like I said, are plenty of dwarf varieties that you can try growing and have just as much fun and, and get just as much enjoyment out of. All right, so yep, that was a lot of rambling from me about garden seeds, but it's something that I, I really enjoy to do this time of year, to, to dream about what my garden will look like in the next growing season. If you enjoy content like this, please let me know. It's a little less formal and I, I worry a little bit that I ramble too much, but you know, that's just, that's just who I am, so. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you in the next one.